Hello, friends. It's Rosa Shive here with another episode review, season three, episode nine, stage three of Mr. Robot. Um, yeah, I don't. I I'm in the Team Elliot hoodie, but I don't. I don't know if we're gonna get full Team Elliot. I think they're setting us up. And we'll talk about the couple different setups here, but um, I wanted to give a couple shout, uh, shout outs. One is to Unmasked Podcast and Mr. O Robot. One for Unmasked po Podcast for prompting. Uh, hello friend on Twitter for prompting, or it might've been Wanda Witch or Wanda Switch on Twitter, prompting um, uh, both the, I, I'm not sure what the actor's name, um, who plays Grant but uh, BD Wong to kind of get the hashtag for their relationship and it's called Grant Rose. So popularizing that out, out there in the Twitter sphere. It may also be from Black Girl Nerds. They also do some Mr. Robot uh, on the Twitter sphere. So Grant Rose is the hashtag if you're for or down for that relationship. Uh, is a I have to say this, uh, White Rose looked super immaculate, which is not what I'm gonna put my hood back on because it's not what my hat hair is looking like. Um, yeah, she just looked exquisite. I was super jealous. Like, the outfit, the, the ambiance of the layout of the room, even the little person doing the, uh, wine, uh, noise-making thing. I'm not sure what it's called, but just everything, the makeup, everything was just exquisite. Um, top-notch, top-notch. No, expect nothing less from White Rose. Um... But for that hashtag, it oh Mr. Robot. There may be, not positive, it's still coming, kind of gelling together, where a lot of the different podcasts and Mr. Uh, Robot reviewers are going to come together at the end of the, the season and kind of give an overall season arc discussion talk. Um, I have more details for you when I get more details about it, but this is something that's been kind of put out in the sphere, if you will, and see where that goes. But I'll have a link to the show notes to those, those two great podcasts that uh, you can support through Patreon or, um, or you know, subscribing, liking, and, and purchasing anything like their Amazon links or anything like that. Um, I'm a supporter there, so I encourage you to support them as well. Uh, what else? I honestly don't know what to think of this episode. I've seen it twice. I, I don't know what they're, they're setting us up for. I feel that we're getting fooled. I really do. And that's the thing about this show because you can follow along, play along, think you figure things out, and then all of a sudden you get this twist and you're like, ah! And it's a good twist because if you go back and rewatch things, you can see, oh, like the 71 building thing. Like if you really were paying attention and I only saw one person and I, I, showed it in the show notes when that did happen um it was like john from oh i'll have a link in the show notes and his name is escaping me but i'm also supportive of his and patreon you should support him he has some really great insights on the mr robot stuff uh about the technical aspects and other shows as well but that was from um basically I don't know what the setup is because they want us to believe that somehow Ellie is winning, is getting the Dark Army, but dark, the Dark Army has pro, proven self, itself to be formable. White Rose seems to be playing on three dimension chess and everyone's sit, sitting in a t 2D world. She's like the circle from uh, Flatland just coming down, descending, and with all this knowledge and you're only seeing like your 2D one dimensional line perspective here, a line perspective and you have no idea what's above. Just no concept of what's going on. And that's what she it feels like when working with her. So I have no idea. So we're gonna kind of go through this. Uh, we get an early flashback, a very different flashback. Um, you don't, they don't really tell us it's a flashback. It's um, Philip Price, Terry Kobe, Tyra Wellick sitting down, and they're they're at all safe. And they, uh, what's his name? Oh, do I have in the show notes? I'm just okay. I'm just gonna go. And they're with our friend that got killed, the head of All Safe, and they, he's pitching All Safe to them as to being their security thing. And Terry Toby is just being such a dick. Like, what is it you have to offer? Why? I mean, he's like wondering why he's even really here. 
and he's like what's the point what are your specs what are your numbers this is a bunch of bullshit you have nothing really to offer you're you're just peons and philip price is just sitting there and um angela comes in and philip price's eyes light up and he sees angela and angela's um uh, handing uh a, a, a perspective paper to uh, fuck, i forgot his name uh to him as he's pitching to all safe and then Terry goes, he goes, hi, hey, hon, uh, can you chop me up, just cream, you know, blah, 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 and stuff. And and she's just staring at him. And she looks at her boss, and she go, she goes, okay. She picks it up, and he goes, and then her boss goes, no, you don't have to do that, Angela. I have my assistant. She goes, no, it's no problem whatsoever. And Phil Price sees her, watches her walk away as she goes and gets, you know, tops up the coffee. And Terry Toby goes into, you know, just goes more and just kind of trashing uh, all safe a little bit about their pitch and everything like that. And Philip Price says, um, we accept your offer. And Terry Copley's like, what? We accept it. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, he, and he's like, okay, great. You know, and we'll send the paperwork over, blah, blah, blah. And then he gets up and leaves. And Terry Colby is like, why are we doing this, Philip Price? Why are we, they're in the car and stuff. And he goes, why are we doing this? What is it? He goes, it's, it's done. The paperwork sent. I've made my decision. And that's pretty much the end of the conversation. There we go. It takes it. Okay. Get in. And so they park and they go and they're going into the evil court building. This is when Tyrell well try to kind of sees this moment or whatever. And he goes, he goes, sir, I, I don't understand why we're doing this all safe thing. You know, we can do, I can put a team together internally and get a team together, get a perspective. We can do this internally far much better than what they're doing. The, you know, the vulnerability is doing this whole, you know, corporate speech, corporate guy thing. And Philip Price just looks at him and goes, what makes you think I even wanted to know your opinion? Like that. And really? You're going to keep on talking? <laughs> talking to me? And he goes, I, and the entire world goes, I think that uh, this all stuff thing, we're going to come to, to regret, regret it. And Philip Price just looks at him and just walks away. <laughs> and leaves Tyra Wellick standing there. And it was just a very interesting conversation to see these three guys, um, whenever I guess uh, they hired Allsafe, for them to see where they are now, particularly Tyra Wellick as it flashes to him as he's being appointed the CTO, as we're soon to find out, of Evil Corp. Uh, he has been released by the FBI, exonerated, because he was never the lead of SSI. That's of course Triton and Moby, that's the narrative. And he's coming home, comes home to an empty house, a dead wife, and a kid that um, turns out is, uh, we find out later, is in Denmark. He's been taken, um, I guess, I guess, Joanne Willock's family. He has no say where his son is at this point in time. He's lost everything for this cause for Elliot. And he's just despondent. He's a bit of a wreck. And we have that. Uh, we'll get back to him. Um, it was very interesting. I think they're really heavily hinting that Philip Price might, in fact, be either Angela's father or some kind of relationship. It could be the grandfather, for all we know. Um, he's kind of a bit of an older man. Um, but they're heavily hinting that. Um, it's obviously very clear, as we find out, as we already kind of sort of known, but the other characters, or at least the F Society side he didn't know, is that Philip Price was well aware about the 5 9 hack and the plans and all that. And we'll get to that back for the moment. But it was clearly it was planned from the very beginning for All Safe to be part of this because either Angela's part of it or something. It's there's there's some stuff up in the air, if you will. Um we'll just go right into Angela. Speaking of Angela, she has completely lost it. All as I said in my live reaction is she's missing is the kittens. Her apartment is a wreck. It looks like a hoarder. She has the pictures of the victims of uh, the seven one buildings taped up over the wall. Their dishes are done. Everything is dirty. Uh, she just looks like completely bad shit, crazy. She just really does. She's very uh, her locks on her door. There's like nine billion of them. She's got the apartment all locked up. Uh, people are calling her, assuming her father. Even though she had that conversation, and I totally forgotten about it in my last review to talk about it with Elliot where Elliot did come and kind of comfort her and try to talk to her. And they spoke about um, having my show notes, how we used to watch their favorite movie and how they ended it, no matter what happens, we're gonna be okay. 
uh, Elliot's on one side of the wall, Angela's on the other side of the wall, and it kind of shows the divide that they're in, like the two different places where Angela is very culpable, fully culpable in the the death of 4,000 people, and Elliot in many ways is, but because of the whole split Mr. Robot personality, maybe not as culpable, but I still think he's fully culpable. These two very culpable people dealing with the fact that he committed this very horrific, horrendous terrorist act for a cause that may no longer be even their own. Um, Angela, of course, is starting to talk to other people, other things. Um, yeah, she's... Whew, she's gone. She's completely gone. She tries to talk to Elliot. You know, she's like, don't you... Don't you want our parents back? Don't you want our parents back? And Elliot's like, Angela, you know, White Rose lied to you. You can't believe this. And she goes, you're trying to trick me. You're trying to trick me. You're all, you're part of it. You're just trying to trick me. She thinks it's all a trick. She thinks that everything is unreality, if you will. And she, she has like this grocery cart thing that you see like in the stores or some people have where they can put all their things and, you know, walk to their apartment or go to the bus and get under the bus and go where they're going. And she has like, there's things like a picture for mom, some stuff in it. And she, she's leaving the apartment, she's she's walking away, and a white van comes, picks her up, and she's thinking, I guess, of course, she goes, yes, I've been expecting you. Um, before that, she sees this guy's trying to sell, kind of looks very similar to Cisco selling these CDs for equine, and it's just, it's very interesting what people will hawk, I guess. And she's t kind of talking to him, kind of talking crazy, oh, you're not gonna trick me, I know why, you know, I know where this is gonna come. She's gonna come. I guess she's talking about White Rose. She's gonna come. She's gonna come to save me. And the people in the white van go, Miss Marco, can you come come with us? And she goes, Yes, I'm ready. Like the yes that you heard here in the Tennessee Tennessee play. Um, what's it? Um, where the guy shouts Stella and um, Blanche. I think the character's name. It's like she's ready to leave and stuff and looking her best and. You know, she always counted on the kindness of strangers. She's kind of like that kind of disconnect type of a deal. And she's being taken away in the white van by basically the people that pick up crazy people. Uh, could have been um, Philip Price might be responsible. Maybe just E-Corp in general. But somebody's obviously called and said, come get this girl. She's crazy. Um, she she is. She's, she's clearly um, disassociated from reality she's clearly has fallen apart she does need some assistance and hopefully the people that picked her up are really the ones that are going to do that for her uh we don't know at this point but angela's just she's not there anymore she's not and it's unfortunate that character just went was ascending up my villain list she's still a complete villain you know she is responsible for the death of four thousand people and she is just crumbled and shattered under the weight of that guilt um, so we have Elliot and Darlene meeting. Um, Elliot brings Darlene in because he has Transmo, Trans email. They're back at their old hangout at the F Society Fun <laughs> Factory, uh, arcade. And Darlene's like, why would Romero do this to us? Why? The whole point of this was there was, there was no going back. There was no exit. There was not going to be a plan B. And... Uh, Elliot was like obviously Romero thought that we needed a plan B and now we have one and she's like well if he has the key loggers then yeah we could you know undo all this but it's in Sentinel we you know look at this information look at all this stuff um, how are we gonna get to it and he goes well we need to get into the FBI building and he's trying to talk it out she goes I can get us in there he goes no this is too dangerous she goes I can get us in there I've been there I work with them he goes but you're no longer CI she goes I have it in and that in is Don of course but they're they're talking through this plan we don't know the full point of the plan and here's why because what ended up happening was uh, Elliot wakes up in front of the mirror and he's having like a dissociative disconnect uh, the blurring lines of him turning into mr robot it's really affecting him you have flipper like barking 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 crazy and when he snaps up out of it you see they own the fbi and he's like they they he must have wrote this mr robot must have wrote this who's they obviously the dark army he you know he figures it out he wipes it around and this is when he starts coming up with this plan and this is part we see i'm going to talk about the elliot part he meets up with darlene 
and he's going to have Darlene go into the FBI, basically, and try to get into Sentinel and try to get to Romero's hard drive. At least that appears to be the plan. So, on Elliot's end, he, what he's going to do is he's going to call the Dark Army out, and he is going to let them know that there's a stage three. So, Elliot goes and he uh, meets up with Irvin. Irvin's trying to pitch a customer. Uh, this car, he goes, turn this way, turn that way, rev it up, doing his little sales pitch. And then all of a sudden the car slows down. She goes, oh, are we out of gas? We're out of gas. And everyone's like, mm, no. And then Elliot opens the back door, goes in, the woman's all startled, who are you? And he goes, Irvin, mean, you know what to do. He hands her a tape. And he goes, you know, hon, um, the dealership's just went down the way. Why don't you go ahead and walk on down there and get the paperwork? And Irvin's looking at him because he's basically cost him a sale, whatever. He goes, you know what to do? And so he tapes over the on, on star thing. And he goes, I need a meeting with White Rose. And Irvin's like, there's not going to be no meeting. He goes, I, he goes, you know what? You need to tell her there's a stage three. We need to meet up because you know how she feels about her timelines. And leaves. And Irvin's just staring at him, like really hardcore staring at him. She's like, oh, okay. And... We have that conversation. So, Irvin, you know, um, gets another call later on. We'll talk about that later when we talk about Darlene and Dom. But, Elliot gets this meeting. And how he, he ends up getting this meeting is, um, you know, he and Angela are talking. This is part of where Angela is trying to talk to him about, you know, don't you want your parents back? Do you want a trick? Uh, he talked outside, they bring it to his apartment, and his apartment's Leon, Leon's there, he goes, hey Buzz, hey cuz, so, you know, how did you get your girl, sorry to ruin your parade, and now there's somebody, got some trim coming in, and he's just like, you're here to see me, you're here to trick me, it was all a big old trick, and Elliot's like trying to tell her, get out of here, things are about to get a little bit worse, I need you to go home, and eventually he's able to convince Angela to go home, and she does go home, and eventually she gets, you know, picked up. So we all goes, okay, you need to come with me. And Elliot's like, uh, okay, and you know, yeah, yeah we, we gotta get going, come on, we're on a time time table. So we, they go, Elliot has his stuff, has his, his equipment, his um, backpack. He goes and Leon drops him off into like this kind of a park area where there's a, uh, an older man um, sitting there eating some food and um, playing a game. He goes, and this, Elliot goes, this is the meeting, and the guy tells him to shut the fuck up, takes his bag. Uh, Leon says, this is where we part, room for you guys, goes away. Elliot walks up the stairs, there's a big um, kind of garden area, and there's a table. He goes to it, there's two Dark Army henchmen, and there's Grant. That's the name of the character that um, is the second to White Rose. And he goes, I made a meeting with White Rose. Why is she here? And he goes, you have all the time you're going to have with White Rose. And he goes, when we made this plan some time ago, you said there was only two parts to the plan. Now you're telling me there's a stage three? I find that very interesting. And he goes, well, yes. Uh, the whole point of taking down E-Corp was to take that down. Now that they have E-Coin, they're stronger than ever. I have a way to attack E-Coin. A way to take it and take get rid of it and um he goes uh if you want to still talk that take down e-corp this is the way to go about it he goes yeah yeah so we're not we're really gonna do that we have all the plans we have your plans off of your computer basically we have all what you need and uh, we're gonna part ways basically don't call us again we're not gonna call you don't call us we're kind of done and he goes is this what you really want to do? Is this how I really want to go? And he goes, basically says goodbye, Mr. Elliot, <laughs> and, and leaves. So they had uh, basically taken his information off of his computer, copied it. Elliot, of course, built a malware program in it. So as soon as they upload it to whatever server, he will be able to access the entire Dark Army network, uh, which he does. And so they show that part, right? I think it's a setup, and I'll talk why. We'll talk about why, why when we get into the Grant and White Rose aspect of the storyline. The second part of this plan that Elliot initiated, um, with maybe a little prompto from Mr. Robot, was uh, Darlene. So Darlene goes and meets up with Dom. They meet up at the same bar place. Dom's a little despondent. You know, Tyra Wellett got released from jail. He's basically gonna get away with it. 
and she's wondering why Darlene's calling, and basically Darlene spills, she goes, yeah, there were some things I didn't tell you, I couldn't trust you or do anything about it, it's about, like, the Dark Army, and, you know, Trent and Moby, they, they weren't part of it, it was all about the Dark Army, it's all about White Rose, she goes, you know about White Rose, she goes, I know some things about White Rose, you know, and she's trying to flirt, trying to talk to Dom, and pace, pace, and pace and patience, and then makes an excuse to go away, takes her bag, comes back and turns out when she goes into the restroom she's trying to clone Dom's badge so she can get into the FBI building but it's not working for some reason for some reason it's not working maybe the badge is different maybe it's a setting maybe it's a machine but it's not working so she has to basically sex her way into Dom's life uh, to get that badge and that's what she does she flirts with Dom a lot they have conversations they get drunk they go back to Dom's place they sleep together it was, Don was very weirdly, weirdly about this whole thing, and the whole time with Darlene, the conversation about White Rose, about the Dark Army, about her not being a CI anymore, so I guess they could meet up, whatever, um, it's not going to be an issue or a problem, but I was very shocked that Don actually took Darlene back to her apartment, um, Darlene tried to, before they engage, uh, to take the badge, but you know, Dom stepped away, put her gun in badge away at the safe. So Darlene's like, shit, <laughs> she's gonna have to break into that, which she does. Um, and Dom catches her. So, I, you know, Dom doesn't sleep. Dom, I think, kind of knew something was up, was just waiting to see what the play was. But so Dar Darlene gets caught. I don't know if it was intentional for Darlene to get caught. Or she, she improvises like she does, and she's a little sloppy, and she got caught. Um, so now she's in the FBI building. Dom's interviewing her. Santiago is a little pissed that Dom and Darlene in the room having a conversation, an interview, and he goes, what the hell is this about? Why are we still here? Why are we still doing her wheel with her? You know, And so Darlene starts feeling about the Dark Army. And basically, she, Dom says, you know, she tried to get to take my badge to get to the Sentinel program, Full disclosure, I did sleep with her. You know, I'll, I'll take it up with OPI, you know, the Office of Responsibility for and write it all up, but she's trying to get into Sentinel. And Sentinel was, why the hell do you want to get into Sentinel? You have any idea? Your immunity is gone. You have any idea what kind of shit you're in? She basically darnly spills and says, when you guys took Romero's hard drive, you also took the encryption keys to the e -core pack and if you want to really undo everything I need to get to Sentinel I need to get to Romero's drives so I can undo it all that's what the whole point of this is right she was looking at Dom and Santiago is looking so panicked right now he's like you can undo everything she's like yeah just let me do my thing and Dom's like yeah let us let her do their thing let's get into Sentinel let's get to Romero's drives let's get to the thing and Dom's like yeah, so Santiago is like, like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Like, this is not part of the plan. So, the, him and Dom are in the office. She goes, yeah, let's, let's let her do her thing. And he's like, let her do her thing. You slept with her. You, you know, you're unprofessional, whatever. And Dom's like, looking at him all crazy. He goes, you're off this case. And she goes, what? <laughs> and she's looking at him. And she's like, yeah, you're off this case. He goes, we can undo all this and I'm off this case? So Dom's kicked off the case, Santiago's panicking, and he calls Irvin, and he's like telling Irvin the downloads, like Darlene's in this building saying she can undo the hack, she knows about White Rose, she knows about the Dark Army, and she says she can undo it through some encrypted files, what the fuck? <laughs> and Irvin's like, uh-huh, he's like writing his like great American novel, he's like, uh-huh, she's in the building, you say, yeah, in FBI custody, he goes, yeah, like, exactly where, she's in an interrogation room, okay, uh-huh, uh, all right, he goes, you're all right, like, he's panicking, so we don't know what Darlene fate, fate is, you know, what's being decided, but it's obviously not good, I know there's a theory, and I'll talk about it in my season spoiler what I think is going to happen for the season finale episode. But about uh, Dom and... Uh, hold on. 
about Dom and Darlene dying in a plane or just Darlene dying in a, pie, in a plane. Philip Price might die in a plane. Somebody's dying in a plane. So there's that. Um, we'll talk about that during my season three. Uh, what I think is going to happen in the season finale. Spoiler episode. Uh, so we don't know what Darlene's fate is. All we know is she's in the interrogation room in the FBI building. Uh, not at Sentinel and Dom's off the case. So we're, there's that part. So I'm not sure if that was part of the plan or not, or contingency. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into it when we get into it. So here's the Mr. Robot part. So Mr. Robot, he's like in front of Elliot's computer. And Elliot had realized that his computer was open and then Mr. Robot got into it and stuff and saw the email. So at some point in the night, Mr. Robot sees the email, sees that um, it can be undone and leaves the apartment and goes to Tyrell Willock. And he's in the, in Tyrell's house and Tyrell is like, he's kind of up, gathered around, a little bit put together. And he sees Elliot in his apartment, well, Elliot slash Mr. Robot is in his house. He's like, what are you doing in my house? You need to get out, out of here. And he goes, look at you. <laughs> You're playing into their hands, you know, we had a thing. And he goes, I lost everything, kind of losing it. He goes, and he's like pushes up against it and they're having an argument and he goes you know what would joanne think of you now think of you being part of the pond their puppet another stage puppet cto you know playing that playing into what the dark army wants they used us you you don't even know what you're playing against and he's like you know they rewarded me with my life i'm gonna have my kid this is what i get for doing what they ask of me you know that was a plan and Elio's like, you know, 71 billings. That was just masterful, you know. That was so grand of you, you know, just kind of rubbing it in. And Tyrell just has enough of it. And he's like, you need to stop talking about my wife. Goes in, they're kind of in the kitchen area. Goes in and gets his blue gloves we haven't seen since season one. And he's going to start beating the crap out of Elliot. And he does. And he starts beating the crap out of Elliot, <laughs> you know, slash Mr. Robot. And Mr. Robot's like, oh yeah, come on, that's it. That's the spirit, there's the fight. And Tyrell starts nailing on the doorbell rings and they won't stop. And so Tyrell gets up, <laughs> stops what he's doing, <laughs> goes and see who's at the door, and it's Philip Price. And he goes, oh, sir, you know, thank you for coming. And Philip Price just walks right in, sees Elliot on the ground, and goes, oh, Mr. Alderson. Like, he's not surprised that Elliot's there. I expected him to be there and goes and sits down on the kitchen table and they're both looking at each other like what the fuck is going on and so Tyra Wallet goes and sits down and eventually Elliot goes and sits down he goes I'm coming here Philip Price goes I'm coming here as a courtesy to let you know that you're going to be the CTO of E Corp and Tyra Wallet's like oh well thank you sir you know blah, blah, blah. you know like he goes and he goes this is just it's this you're a figurehead you will have no position of power you have no authority i just want to let you know this so you're just part of a bad bargain i made and you're the result of it and tyra well he starts getting a little pissed you know you're just jealous because you fired me because you know you knew i was innocent and you shouldn't have done that and you can't even bring yourself a, and philip price is looking at him like you're a goddamn moron <laughs> He goes, he's like, they don't understand, <laughs> make no mistake about this. This is what's going to happen. There's nothing you can do about it. This is how it is. It's just a courtesy. And he walks away and Elliot looks at Philip Price and goes, you knew. You knew about 5'9", 71 buildings and, he, and you knew about it. And Philip Price stops turns around and he goes, yeah, I knew about it. I knew about the 5-9 and the, the F Society and all, the Dark Army and all that. Yes, you, 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 what, you, you think this is going to happen? Because what, you, you're a lone rope, a revolutionary? You just stumbled into something. That's what you did. You're a lone wolf. You know, the only reason why revolution hap revolutions happen is because powerful men like him let it happen. And Elliot's like, we're going to take you down. <laughs> Everything, see, there you go. Where's your leadership? You thought this was a revolution? Where are your followers? A real leader doesn't in set agendas, inspires agendas. Look at you two. <laughs> you 
He's like, look at you. Like, you're a bunch of morons. He goes, and so he, he goes and leaves, you know, where are your followers there, you know, Mr. Alderson? And he's right, his followers are dead. He doesn't have any followers. If you look at season two, it's really the extended part that we didn't really get in, in much into other than knowing that they are responsible for dropping the bull balls in Congress and then getting caught in the highway and then one of them showing up at the um, Sarah Jacobs house is that they were probably following Darlene. Darlene is probably one responsible for them following her. Even though she wasn't the best leader, she was the one who inspired agendas, if you will. Um, it wasn't really Elliot, per se, I don't think. Um, all of Elliot's followers are dead. Romero, Trenton, Moby, maybe soon to be Darlene. Angela's a crack up and you know, it's just really, to be honest, it's just him and uh, Darlene slash Mr. Robot. That's it. That's all that's left really of society. And so <laughs> he, le Philip Price leaves and it's just sinking in Tyra Wellick, like how he's being played, how he's being used, how they don't, you know, appreciate or care about him, how he's really a puppet, just as Elliot was saying, for the Dark Army and he has no meaning, no value, no power. And he goes... We can use this. Elliot goes, we can use this to our advantage. He goes, how? <laughs> Tyrell is like, how? It's like, we, we guess, yeah, there's a vulnerability. We got to think about it. We got to work at it. And Tyrell goes, yeah, there is a vulnerability, the FBI. And I guess he must have told Mr. Robot, even though Mr. Robot couldn't really tell Elliot that who the vulnerability is, Santiago. Uh, oh. So I don't know. I don't know that San Diego bit beyond just the FBI bit because um, Mr. Robot went back to you know Ellie's apartment, looked up the Sentinel information, trying to figure things out, and wrote them before he changed back into Elliot. Wrote the message they they own the FBI and hoped that Elliot could piece it all together. I just don't know if he pieced together San Diego part. Um, so there's that. There's. So we have now where Elliot put out there the stage three, the takedown e-coin to let the Dark Army know. But really what it was was a back door to get into the Dark Army. But did they get into the Dark Army? That's the question. Um, plus they revealed their biggest gem, really, their biggest trump card, which is the keys to Romero's hard drive are at the FBI Sentinel building. And I'll talk about that in my theory vein about what that could mean for some characters um, to undo everything. So if the Dark Army owns the FBI, they, then they own that and they know that, then there's that. The tidbit is, is I don't know if Romero, was he an FBI informant? Was he doing this on his own? Why was he key logging um, everybody? There's some big what if questions about Romero. Uh, because there was a lot of information about F Society, and initially I thought maybe Trenton was a CI. Turns out maybe Trenton wasn't a CI. Maybe that's why her picture, you know, that was a speculation because that's why her picture wasn't on the wall. Maybe that wasn't the case. Um, maybe they just didn't have a good picture of her. Um, you know, what's going on with her? Why did he do it? I know he didn't trust Elliot. He thought that Elliot was crazy. Um, well, what kind of is going on there? Was he released from prison for the sole purpose of maybe informing and snitching on people? I, I don't know. There's a big question mark on with the Romero. And particularly, you know, did he die because of the Fun Society curse because he was an owner and he died by an accident and really did get shoot, shot by a bad drug deal? Or was he killed on purpose? So there's that whole aspect of it. But we, what we do know is that there's a potential a strong potential to undo um, a lot of what is happening and if the evil corp were to able to gain regain their digital assets particularly since their paper records and all their buildings are gone then a lot of the economy or at least the confidence in the company will be back up because then they have the, the data back and everyone knows who owns what and all that and it can get rectified in some fashion but you know you still have ecoin and dominance so evil corp will never die it just reforms it to something else i guess so the white rose part so as i said in the very beginning of the episode she was very exquisite she's very elegant looking is 
White Rose. She's at our little hideout location somewhere. She was with Grant, her henchman. He had just come back from Elliot's meeting. And she's a little pissed, a little perturbed about something else. And she's mad because her Washington Township plan, the, the breaking up the pieces and, and getting it out of the country, is, is a month delay. And Grant's like, you know, we kind of knew this might happen because of the martial law, getting things out. It's just going to take time. She's like, it's taking too much time. It should be in the Congo by now. You know, these delays is, is upsetting to her. And Grant's kind of like, you know, this is kind of your fault. And she's like, what? She goes, you know, you didn't have to enact stage two. If you didn't enact stage two, you wouldn't have martial law going on. And your, your plant would be in the Congo by now. You also wouldn't have Elliot saying that there's a stage three. And, you know, if you allowed me in control of stage two, we wouldn't be dealing with Elliot, we wouldn't be dealing with any of this, and we wouldn't be dealing with the possibility of E Corp or Evil Corp receiving um, their keys back because, you know, Darlene's in the FBI building. And White Rose is listening to this, you know, why shouldn't I be listening to you? Why is this? And Grant's kind of breaking it down to her. And White Rose, you know, yes, but he set up this meeting, he came out to you, and she goes, you shouldn't underestimate Elliot, and she goes, and not underestimate him. We should basically eliminate him and let him, like you said, die for just like his father. And, you know, and she goes, really, the stage three thing? We kind of anticipated this, you know, pushed back by him, you know. And he, he, Grant saying, you kind of entertained Elliot a little too long with all this, with the, all this is going on, with the indulgence and stuff like that. That's why there's, you know, your delays to your project, this thing we worked so hard for. And as you know, they're kind of going back and forth and you see it, you can kind of see from their relationship that they do have a kind of bit of more of a partnership. It's more not just attach a boss type of a deal, but it is a full on partnership. And they're talking back and forth. She goes, okay, well, maybe it's time for Elliot to die. You, if you think that's the way to go, that's the path, then take it, <laughs> you know. But I, I don't think White Rose fully underestimated um, Elliot. And that is why I don't think when Elliot hacked into Dark Army because they've proven to be so formable and, and ahead, that that's what ha what happened. I don't think he got into the Dark Army. I think maybe there was like a decoy honeypot situation to make him think that so they can set him up for something else because they still need to get their, their plant out, the Washington Township plant, and a war to start, I guess, in a way. So I think they're, they are going to use Elliot to... Um, for some reason. And Bright Rose asks a very important question. What do you, if you don't think he's really going after the e coin thing, what do you think he's going after? And she goes, he goes, I think he's coming after us. We're the target. And that's pretty much why he has to die. And I think that's a very important revelation because it is true. It shows the insight that they're very well aware of the fact that Elliot might be coming after them. And then I think White Rose kind of anticipated this. That's why I don't think he was really truly successful in, in the malware thing. But I'll talk about that in my season three spoiler stuff. But it was, you know, they were showing a very open, a very engaging relationship between um, these two individuals. It was very, they called hashtag Grand Rose. That was very beautiful. That it was a nice partnership, a nice revelation on the part of their relationship and added layer to it. Um, I think that's all I really have to say is the fact that basically they're setting it up at least for the season finale is F Society or Flash Elliot versus Dark Army White Rose. Which might have been the whole point of the, these two groups from the very beginning. But it's just a very interesting revelation. Um, the next thing was the fact that Phil Price demonstrated why he's a leader and Elliot is and Slash Mr. Robot is not because he did make a key, you know, line saying you know leaders inspire the agenda and he inspired those two morons basically uh tyrell or those very naive thinking they you know lone wolf in it taking down the man if you will um elliot slash mr robot slash tyrell to, for this agenda to start this stage street to take down uh the dark army um we'll see how it goes we'll see particularly with the tyrell well relationship the partnership if it's truly back on 
after all he did lose his wife he's lost his kid he has a lot of people to blame including himself and he likes not really blaming himself so he's lashing out at people particularly elliot and even the dark army definitely the dark army but elliot in particular um very fearful that for don for don and darlene um don't know what San Diego is going to do. He's under a lot of pressure. He knows he's under scrutiny as a, the boss of this division and wrapping things up, but also being part of Dark Army at the same time. <laughs> I think this guy's going to snap. Um, a lot of big things are going to happen for season 10. Um, real quick, because I'm going to talk some bits about the spoiler in the spoiler episode, what I think might happen. But one, where did Angela go? Two, how is Darlene going to get out of that room? Three, what's Dom going to do? Um, four, did Elliot really hack into the Dark Army? Or was it a ploy on the part of the Dark Army? Five, what's Philip Price going to do? Because I feel he's not done. He he told uh, a little conversation with uh, Tyrell and Elliot, the reason why he didn't go after Tyrell is because he wasn't worth the move. He's not worth it. So, and because Tyrell said, "You're out of moves. That's why you came to me. This is, you know, this is why this is happening." Tyrell said, "You're not even worth the move. Don't even know why we're having this conversation, really, other than me just letting you know your place. Um, you really shouldn't be talking back to me." Um, I think he still has a move left against White Rose. I'm just not sure what that is. Uh, Elliot and Mr. Robot, are they gonna team up again together in a way to get this done? What's going to happen? There, there's a lot of balls, there's a lot of things going up in the air. And will Trenton Moby get redeemed? You know, uh, will a war happen? You know, I guess this is what we're going to find out um, in season 10, I mean, yeah, season 10, episode 10, season 3 of the episode. <sighs> I, you know, it's very exciting. I'm sad that the show is going to end. Um, I do have a couple of shows I am going to watch, but I don't think they're, well, maybe one of them is um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, quite as uh, tension driven as this particular season has been and anticipating, you know, the next episode. Um, I'm already looking forward to the, uh, to a new season, which is not like a year from now. Ugh. And God knows what the theories are going to be from here on till the next episode, you know, the next season starts. But, you know, it's been a good run. It's been very enjoyable. There was a giveaway. There was a winner. It's in, I'll put the information in the uh, show notes. Uh, for episode 10, for my live reaction, I'm giving away uh, $20 in Bitcoin. So if you're not part of the F Society RFC Facebook group, join now before Wednesday. Uh, 10 p.m. Pacific time so you can enter the random drawing for that So that's pretty much it. That's my review um, Thank you all for listening um, Stay tuned for my thoughts on what will happen in the season um, finale season 3 finale, which is I'm not sure what the title is um, But um, I'll give my thoughts on that and until next time friends. This is Hiroja Shai. I'm logging off